Hey, Kaylee, how are you? Good morning. Good morning, Greg. Happy to be here. Yeah, me too. All, yeah, 100% looks beautiful and sunny there today. Yeah, it's, it's coming out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, so today we have an incredibly, what could be a boring topic, but is actually really critical to our success, happiness, and fulfillment. And it's these uh, funny things we call financial uh, reports, uh, financial indicators. So let's just bust right in. Let's talk about okay. these these, let's talk these, about it. these things and what they are and what they mean and why they can be scary, but why they cannot also, uh, why they can be super simple and super accessible. Yeah, super simple. And um, I think we just have this idea in our mind that they're scary and we it brings us back to like high school math class and we start like twitching mm -hmm. and we're like, I don't know numbers. Oh my <laughs> gosh, I don't know. I don't know how to do it. And it's actually like, it is quite simple. Um, they just look intimidating too. Um, and I guess the best comparison I could give is it's like learning a new language. Right. And so, you know, that's a, it's a bit of a learning curve, but you, if you want to communicate with somebody, you're going to have to learn the, their language right. and say, if any, if any of our listeners out there are parents, um, and you have a baby, you need to learn the language of crying. Mm. Um, and you need to know, you need to start to like, understand if the cries cause they're hungry or the cries cause they want to sleep or, you know, what that cry is. And so the, the numbers are the language of business. And so if you want to start to communicate with your business and understand your business, you need to speak that language. Mm -hmm. And so the numbers actually bring to life a story about your business and what its needs are and what you can focus on. And so when you start to look at it through that lens, um, you don't even see numbers anymore. Like once you've learned okay. the language, it's a bit of okay. a learning curve. Right. Um, right. Like when I look at what we're going to talk about today is the P&L, which is kind of the main document that you need to know, mm -hmm. um, along with the balance sheet and cash flow, but we'll focus mostly on PL, um, which stands for profit and loss. So it's all the money that came in and all the money right. that went out. That's as simple as it is. Right. Um, and when we learn to what it's telling us, then like, I just see a story of like, oh, there's a lot of color wastage happening in my salon or, oh, our sales really dropped this month. Why? Or, wow, we had a great month. What have we been doing? Um, so that's what I see. I don't see like a math equation or numbers. And so that's my mission and vision and goal is to get salon owners to fall in love with their numbers. Um, because when they can speak the language of their business, they can really get um, honed into what their needs, their business needs are. And that's when they can do, they can really succeed. That's so cool because I know that when we hear the whole P&L thing, by the way, I thought that was a punk band from the eighties, Public Image Limited, <laughs> but but it's not. Um, so so you know what what is that? What does it mean? And and of course, one of the scary words there is loss. What do you mean? There's a loss, I, but loss is is part of profit, right? So P and L, and the, the the key is to balance. So let's talk yeah. about in just general terms what a P and L is. And if I can just add this in real quick, I've often considered it to be like a bucket with holes in it, and the holes are your loss, right? So you're you're pouring water in the top of this bucket and it's squirting out the holes on the side. And okay, I like that. Yeah, and so that's your loss, right? And, and that you need to have water flowing out of the bucket because that's what the bucket does. In other words, your, your, your company has costs like uh, insurance, rent, uh, in whatever, right? Lease costs, um, cost of goods sold, et cetera. So that's kind of where it's going. But then you've got the hose going in the top and that's all the money coming in. And so yeah. there's two things you can do. Either you can make the hose bigger or turn the more water on and put more water in the bucket and the level goes up, or you can close those holes a little bit and get that water level to go up by losing less with the same amount of water going in. Yeah, so, that's a great analogy. I like it. Yeah, it's just profit and loss. And, yeah. and you want that water to kind of come up and actually eventually spill over the top and have a little bit left over in a catch basin underneath that is money for you to have that doesn't have to go anywhere and that you oh, can that would be great <laughs> yeah i know that's what we want right so, well, so i love that with that well, little analogy uh tell us about profit and loss well while we're on analogies i'll give you another one okay. if that one didn't the quite sink in um yeah. and this was one of my staff because i really um brought my team on it and you know i listened to um sales reps and you know um different people in the industry and they're like salon owners just don't get numbers stylists don't get numbers they don't yeah. want to know yeah. and they have all these like beliefs that they're putting on you already or, right or i'll talk to you our listeners right they already you know you put yourself in a stereotype and they put you in a stereotype of like you don't get this stuff 
well, I get it. I skipped high school. I didn't, I wasn't good at math and I learned it because I had to learn it and I learned it the hard way. And so I'm trying to help people not learn it the hard way. Um, and so I really educated my team. And so my, I'm like, if my stylist can get it, then like, there's no reason why every other salon owner and other stylist can't get it. And right. so I was explaining it to my stylist and she said, Oh, like the game Pac-Man, which I don't even know if that's relevant anymore, but there was a video game where all this, um, stuff was coming down and the Pac-Mans were eating it. There were like coins and the Pac-Mans mm-hmm. were eating it. And again, it's like that income coming in and then it's getting eaten up. Right. right. And then after you have profit, but what, this is the part that people really don't get is that profit doesn't mean money in your pocket. Profit, there's still more Pac-Man that eat it. Right. right? So it's not, so that's where it's really confusing because you can see like, oh, my business made 10 grand, Mm -hmm. but there's only two grand in the bank account. Or it says I have money. It says I made money, but there's no money in the bank. And right. so that's where people get really confused because we're not done like eating into it because that's only one of the three documents we need to be looking at. Right. 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 And, and even like your bookkeeper, like is probably not giving you the other documents if you're not asking because yeah. most people just put them up on the shelf and don't really pay attention to them. Yeah. So they're not doing that extra work unless you're, you're on it. Right. Let's take a so, quick look at one of your P and L's and just, uh, we'll take a big scary look at one of your P and L's. All right, here we Ooh, go. Yeah, see, yeah. it's like, wow. <laughs> it's <laughs> ugly, right? It's, I, we try to make it as pretty as possible, but it's, it's ugly to look at. I and see especially, a story, though. I see a story here. You see a story, right? And so um, this is kind of like one thing that's really important here, when, if you get this from your bookkeeper, is to make sure that they've separated the different ways the money comes in or the water comes into the bucket. Let's use your analogy, Greg. Like, yeah there's different sources, right? Different hoses going Mm -hmm. in. And so in a salon, that would be your retail product, your service sales. Um, Maybe you have room rental. Maybe you have um, uh, extensions you can record separately. So you want to get your main businesses uh, separated so that you can see like what percentage of sales it is. So you can see here, we've got retail products and service sales, and that shows that how much you made in that month. So right. this is whatever date you see here, it's all simply like, let's just keep it really simple. In December, $12,000 of retail products were sold and $60,000 of service sales happened. Right. That's what came in, right? And then after that, everything, we have to see what comes out. And there's two categories of things coming out. There's one that you use the term already, cost of goods sold. So mm-hmm. that's a language, that's like the new language that we're using. Right. And that, that means it's a direct cost, which means it only happens when the service happens. So I only use a tube of color when I have a color client. Right. But I have to pay my receptionist whether a client walks in or not. Mm-hmm. So that's the difference, right? So you can think about it. Is it a cost of good or is it a normal expense? based on did did it ha- did it only happen when the service happened right right i like the <clears throat> i like the little piece sold in it cost of goods sold that's the yeah. way i always remember it it's like cost of goods well what does that mean oh sold you mean something i sold so it's almost like i sold it but i had to buy it first so yeah. when did that happen yeah exactly and so it only becomes an expense on your pnl when you sell it so that's why it's a cost of goods sold. So all that retail product I buy and it's sitting on my shelf, yeah. that's something that I own. And that you see on the balance sheet. That's another document that you know, we could cover another day. Um, and so then it comes here and it gets written, it gets deducted. So you don't have to pay tax on that money because it's an expense that you right. bought, right? right? And so that comes off. And then we have this other term, gross profit which is like a subtotal. Just think of it as a subtotal. So after all those direct costs, you get a subtotal. Mm -hmm. And then this is where like our stylists are so confused because (laughs) they think that's it, right? They think, okay, you paid me and the rest is yours. Most salons have an average of like 28% of other expenses here. Huh. Okay. That's a lot. That's, that's a lot. That's more than a quarter of, of overall costs, right? Oh yeah, it's huge, especially if you're overpaying your stylist, which is really mm. common, right? You're giving 60% to your stylist, then you didn't consider like all the taxes you pay on them, all the vacation pay, stat pay, 
um, that's on top of that 60%. And now you add like another 28. Well, this one's showing 37, um, but you've got at least 28%. And you can just see how the small things add up, right? Because this is like 3%, 1%, 1%, like really small numbers. They're all like really small numbers, but that's adding up to like 27,000. So we just don't realize how quickly all of these things add up. And you can see it here. I mean, you know, cleaning expenses, credit card fees, computer software expenses, education, training, insurance, meals, entertainment, office, payroll yeah. for your like front desk, your apprentices, postage delivery, recycling fee, rent, repair, maintenance, like, and then they wonder why you don't have money to like replace the hot water tank at yeah. Christmas, right? Oh, or, ouch. <laughs> or why you can't do the redo the floor or whatever it is that your team's asking you for. Um, so it's really important to have profit. And so after we take off all those other little things, mm. then we have this line called profit. So that's your net income or net profit. But that's the tricky part is, so here it says 6,559. Mm. We're not done eating away at that. <laughs> okay. So because I got really excited, I went, wow, six and a half grand. Well, I've paid for everything, right? And I've earned everything. So why don't I just have that money? How come that's just not mine to do with whatever it is I want to within the context of my business? Yeah, exactly. So this one, now we have profit that comes out of it. Mm -hmm. um, if you took out a loan to open your business, you've got your loan repayment. Oh. So that doesn't get written off. The government wants after tax money to pay back your loan. Mm. It doesn't get deducted. You get to deduct your loan interest. Um, you have to restock your shelves with new inventory that comes out of that money. Um, like I said, you might buy that hot water tank. That's a thousand bucks that comes out of that money. It doesn't get written off. It sits on your other balance sheet. The balance sheet I call the truth serum because we can ha look really good here. This is showing in December what went in and what went out. Right. So and, if we, and it if could we, be that December was a great month. So yeah, maybe 65, 59 but maybe March won't be quite as healthy, right? Right. And it also shows like, say um, I bought some product, it, it, like, it's going to show only what I used. Mm. So I might have a whole bunch of products sitting on the shelf, which is showing on my balance sheet. That's not showing up here. So that money's all tied up. It's like, think of like money that's usable and money that's not usable. Like I can't go to the government and say, Hey, can I pay you taxes in color tubes? Right. Right. So that once that money's tied up, <laughs> then you start put that in, all, in an envelope. There you go. <laughs> Here I'm sending all that's all I have. I'm sending you my color tubes because I just got a whole whack of like, you know, and I get it when I opened my salon, I wanted to have all the lines. I wanted to do everything I thought my owner should do. And right. I hate it as a stylist running out of color. And mm -hmm. so I was like, I'm going to stock them deeper. I'm going to have more lines, more options. And we had like an inventory nightmare because I didn't get all this stuff. And when we finally like counted it up, you know, there was like 20 grand sitting on the shelf. Um, and, you know, wow. it just wasn't necessary. Like, you know, big companies run with like eight grand or, you know, they just have because they've got it turning over really nicely. Um, so salon improvements, large purchases, if you want to pay yourself, like, probably most salons who get this haven't paid themselves yet. Yeah. So now you need to get paid out of that 6,000. So the government needs to get paid. You need to get paid. You need to improve the salon. You need to buy more stuff. And that's all coming out of that $6,000 there. Wow. So much to think about. Okay. But in general terms, and could you just zoom in a couple of times? Just um, a couple of clicks. Yeah. So, I mean, really when we look at it, um, the beauty of this, I think what it does show us, if I can just kind of summarize at the top, you've got where you make your money and that's the P or the profit. Yeah. yeah. Up there. And you've so got it beautifully uh, a split out by the way. So you can really get a good idea of like how much you're selling off the shelves in terms of retail and then what you've got in terms of service because, and you've got your little percentage there too, which is nice because you could say, Hey, let's get that up to, 18, 19, 20%. Yeah. And then below you've got, so that's your P at the top, I guess. And yeah. So to speak. And then underneath you've got all of your expenses. So you can really separate them, right? What you're making and what you're spending. That's sort of exactly. the function of a P&L. Yeah, exactly. You got it. So it's everything coming in. A really simple P&L will show exactly that. Just your, it'll just show sales, expenses. Right. Um, then we've broken it out a little bit fancier. 
so that we can get really critical information about like how much money are we spending on retail? How much money are we spending on back bar supplies, right? This line is really important because it's how much we actually used in collar. Yeah. Um, a lot of salons are leaking money big time in there because they're huh. not tracking it. So um, when you have it laid out nicely, again, it's that language piece of like, what can this tell me? Um, it's going to tell you exactly what you use. So you know if you have a problem or not. Whereas, you know, we just, if you're running blind, you just don't know. You don't know these things. So um, this is the way we teach to lay it out. And it's really effective. And, but you've got it, like Greg, it's the, and the, you hear, like, if you think of um, business language too, like mm. you hear them, like the shrewd businessman, he only cares about the bottom line, right? right. Like yeah. that's the bottom line, this net income, that's the bottom line. Or um, you hear above the line, below the line. Well, that's right. above the lines of profit, below the lines of expenses. So all these kind of things that are floating around, then you start to connect the dots and be like, oh, I get it. Like yeah. I get what they're telling me. Okay. That's and right. don't worry if you don't get it the first time. Like I asked my bookkeeper, I called her like every time I got the PL being like, can you explain this to me again? <laughs> How does this work? Um, <laughs> yeah. And that's why I can teach it now because I just, I wasn't afraid to ask. I wasn't afraid to sit down with her, try mm. to really understand it. And um, I think that's a really missing link right now. And especially during this season where this needs to be your compass, this needs to, your P and L is your compass and your, mm. your balance sheet is your compass. Like the, and we'll talk about balance sheet another time, but like, if you're not looking at this, um, I, I don't know how you're going to recover. Like this is, this is the language Like you need to speak to your business and this is the language your business speaks. So you need to learn that language. Um, so, it's really yeah. important. Yeah, absolutely. It's almost like your business speaking to you. Um, it's almost like as if you, you know, when you meet an employee and I don't know, maybe they go on a sales trip or something or, or they're, or they're busy just uh, doing, I'll just go to grid. Uh, okay. Um, you know, they, they go somewhere you go, well, you know, how did it go or how did it look? They report back to you. And so for me, this is almost like this is your business telling you what it's up to. Well, yeah. I'm busy over here, like paying that expense and you're, get, you're getting money from over here. And I suppose even with a P&L, you can do a comparison year over year, right? You could get a P&L oh, yeah. from one year and say, look, guys, we, you know, last year we did 10,000 in retail. This year we did 14. Congratulations. Way to go. We've reached our goal. It could be a really simple yardstick as well, too. Like it doesn't have to be complex. It can be super no. simple, right? No, I promise you, if you take the time to look at it, you're going to love, you're going to fall in love with it. Right. I promise you, because it's telling you like critical information. And I'll just tell you a quick story about one of my clients. She was like, I don't get it. I don't get it. She took my course twice and she was like, I don't get it. I don't get it. And I was like, okay, look at me. Like, what do you not get? Like go through each line. And she's like, okay, this is income. Okay. This is the cost of good. Okay. This is yeah. that. And she got all the way to the bottom and then she's like, oh, I guess I get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's that moment when the light just, bulb goes off, right? Well, it, she was just like shutting herself down she was, mm. because of all these limiting beliefs she had about like numbers and how smart she was or, you know, yeah. she was just totally shutting herself down. And when I asked her to like explain it back to me, she, she got it because yeah. it isn't that complicated. It's not complicated. So um, it's just new and anything new is uncomfortable. So yeah. And yeah. I think, yeah, I think we have to really look at it in very simple terms, top and bottom money in and money out and yeah. and you get a dollar in you spend 90 cents making that dollar you've got a, a dime left over but that isn't really left over it doesn't matter that the key is that this is a critical document and you can use it for other things right it's not the be on all and end all it's just a piece of it's just kind of like a little um like a roadmap almost right yeah like, it's just information mm -hmm. it's just information about yeah. your business yeah and so, you're in charge of it ultimately you're totally in charge of it so I challenge all of you listeners to get in touch with that bookkeeper and get your most up-to-date P&L. And if you need help reading it, um, you can reach out to me because that's what, what I'm here to do is make you fall in love with it. So if you don't believe I can do that, <laughs> I'm <laughs> here to prove on. it to you. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Kaylee. See you next time. Okay. Bye. Bye.